The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus departed to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when he came, he called his disciples to himself, and from them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles, Simon, who he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called a zealot, and Judas, the same son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. And when he came down with them and stood on a stretch of level ground, a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon came to hear him and be healed of their diseases. And even those who were tormented by unclean spirits were cured. And everyone in the crowd sought to touch him because power came forth from him and healed them all. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Paul paints a brilliant picture of Jesus in this letter to the Colossians. Jesus Christ, the Lord. And he says, walk with him. In other words, have an ongoing relationship with him. Be rooted in him. Everything I do has to have reference to Christ and flow out of him and into me so that no one see to it that see to it that no one captivate you with an empty seductive philosophy according to the traditions of men that is any religion that's not christian any philosophy that somehow contradicts Christ is not acceptable to us. It's a lie. Because there's darkness and there's light. There's truth and there's a lie. There's the kingdom of Christ and the kingdom of Lucifer. It's that clear. And St. Paul is pointing this out to his readers. Not to be caught up in empty seductive philosophies maybe a better way to say that is the favorite the favorite philosophy today is in my opinion or i feel how many of you can rely on your feelings 100 percent. if you raised your hand you're deceived back there pay attention in class today For in him, that's Jesus, dwells the whole fullness of the deity bodily. In other words, everything about God is present in Jesus Christ. Everything. And anything else that we seek is the other guy. And St. Paul goes on. And you share in this fullness in him. This is the Eucharist. The complete bodily presence of Christ that you receive in Holy Communion. And this is reached out and given to us in baptism, St. Paul says, when you were baptized. Even when you were dead in your transgressions. In other words, a sinner, God was already reaching out to you. He brought you to life along with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions. 
bringing us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And now you see Jesus in the gospel. He goes to a mountain to pray, to commune with the Father. And it says he spent the night in prayer. I was thinking how dark that night must have been. But with the Father, he peers into the darkness. The darkness that is the world without Christ. He peers into the darkness, seeing all the souls that are held captive. And he begins with 12 of them. I see you guys. You're going to be my generals. They become the ones he picks to help him lead people out of darkness into the light. And so he chooses 12. And they come down the mountain. They make this grand entrance, Jesus with his generals, coming down the mountain. And the fruit of what they were about to do is tasted in what Jesus does here. Great crowds of his disciples, large numbers of people coming from everywhere, Jerusalem, Judea, Tyre, Sidon. He heals all their diseases. He drives away unclean spirits, and people are cured of these things. And everyone sought to touch him, because power came forth from him, and he healed them all. We must be careful not to approach Jesus for power. That's what Lucifer did. Instead, we approach Jesus in all humility and rely on him to save us and bring us into the kingdom of light. When we start to grasp for power, it's so easy to allow the elements of pride and greed and lust enter into our hearts. Instead, we come to him in humility, begging him to save us. And should he call us to be in his inner circle, which he invites all of us, he calls us to be in his inner circle. We cooperate with him in his ministry. But first, the first line of cooperation is to mingle with Jesus personally, to have a life of prayer, and to meet him in the sacraments so that his presence would be pouring out of us. Jesus is asking you today to take sides. You're in between two hills. On one of them is the captain of all evil. And on the other hill is the king of heaven and earth. Who are you going to serve? Where are you going to go? There's only one to serve in Christ Jesus. Don't take any deception or substitute or counterfeit. Regina Jenny, let her